Hello all, welcome back to FAD Learning and let's continue exploring the updates on Angular 20. So in this section, we are going to see the development updates on template file. But before we dive in, let's quickly recap the naming convention changes from our last video where we explored the new component file naming convention in Angular 20. To recap, the Angular team has dropped the component prefix from each file by default. And to demonstrate this change, we created a new Angular 20 project and generated a user component using the CLI command. And as expected, we got the four standard files, but without component prefix. Now, before we dive in into the main topic, let's quickly wrap up the naming convention changes for services, directives, and pipes, which I missed covering in the last section. So first, let's talk about service. If we create a new service called a demo in Angular 20, we will get two files without the service prefix, such as demo.spec.ts and demo.ts. This means demo.service.spec.ts becomes demo.spec.ts and demo.service.ts becomes demo.ts, dropping the service part from the original file names. And same thing happens with the directive. Consider we create a directive named auth, then auth directive.spec.ts becomes auth.spec.ts and auth directive.ts becomes auth.ts. Here also dropping the directive part from the original file names. Now last, let's talk on the pipe. Same like service and directive, if we create a new pipe called square in Angular 20, then we will get two files with a hyphen pipe prefix instead of dot, where the square.pipe.spec.ts file becomes square-pipe.spec.ts and square.pipe.ts becomes square-pipe.ts. Now let's try it out in Angular 20 updates project. So let's jump into the Visual Studio Code Editor. And here under App, I'll create a new folder called Services. I'll open new integrated terminal. And here I'll create new service using command ng generate service as for service and service name demo. Hit enter. And as expected, we got two files demo.spec.ts and demo.ts without the service prefix. But in Angular and earlier, we would get demo.service.spec.ts and demo.service.ts. But now Angular 20 omits the service prefix by default. Next, let me create one more folder for pipes. And here, I'll create new pipe using command ng generate d for pipe and pipe name. Where? Hit enter. And here also we are getting two files with a different naming convention. Until Angular 19, we got files like file name.pipe.ts and file name.pipe.spec.ts. But now in Angular 20, instead of a dot between pipe name and pipe, we are getting a hyphen. So this is the only difference in pipe naming convention. Now next, let's create one more folder for directive. And here also I'll create one new directive using command ng generate d for directive and directive name auth. Once I hit enter, we can see the two files with name auth.spec.ts and auth.ts. Here also Angular 20 omits the directive prefix by default. Okay, so it means from component services and directives, Angular 20 removed the respective prefix from the file name. But in pipes, hyphen has been added instead of dot. Hope it is clear to all. And one more thing, when importing the component services, directives or pipe in other component, we use their names like inside app.ts file. If I want to import the other component that is user component, then we use their name only. So here I just need to add the component name user. And for services, we would add demo to import the service. For directives, I'll add auth. And for pipes, I'll add square pipe. Okay. But here, 
component service or directive share the same name then to avoid conflicts you need to double check what you are importing here you can see the user is imported from the user folder demo is imported from the services folder and auth is imported from the directives folder since pipe have the hyphen pipe prefix so this reduces the chance of import conflicts with other entities okay so that's wrap up our discussion on naming conventions in the previous video we covered only the component naming convention and one of our viewers asked about services and pipe so we covered those here now let's move forward and explore another new features in angular 20 that is development updates on template so under this we will dive into some exciting new aspects of template development so the first update is the exponential operator also known as exponentiation which is now supported in templates using the double asterisk operator so let's try this out in the visual studio code editor here i'll add the user component and inside app.html file i'll import the selector of user component from here i'll remove this router outlet and i'll close this app component and i'll open the user component html and ts file and inside browser you can see the user component rendered now inside this user.html file instead of this paragraph i'll add h2 element and inside this i'll just add the heading exponential operator and here inside double curly brackets we can write expression for example here i'll write 5 star star 3 so this calculates the 5 to the power of 3 and 5 to the power of 3 is 125. If I switch to the browser, we can see the expected output is displayed. That is 125. And if I paste the same thing inside Angular 19 project, so inside this window, you can see I have already opened the Angular 19 project. So here inside app component.html file, I'll just paste the same expression. And if I open the integrated terminal and run this project with ngs, here you will get an error saying object is possibly undefined. So this means starting from Angular 20, exponentiation is now supported in templates. So this is the first update on templates. Now, next, let's explore the tag the template literals. Angular version 19.2 introduced support for template strings in expressions and Angular version 20 takes it further by allowing tagged template literals. So let's understand this with an example. So for that, let's create a function inside class file of user component. And suppose we have a function called uppercase and that text strings of type template strings array. And this function return the string in uppercase. So return strings of zero dot to uppercase. Now in the template file, we can call this uppercase function using the string interpolation syntax. Like here inside h3, I'll add heading tag the template literals colon inside string interpolation. I'll call the uppercase function and pass a string as a literal. So here I'll use backtick and inside this backtick I'll pass hello world. Now save the changes and let's check the output in the browser. And here you can see we are getting the same string in uppercase. Okay. So what we did, we have created a function in a class file called uppercase and added a required logic inside that function. And then call the same function inside the template file with string parameter. So this example demonstrates how tagged template literals can be used to convert strings to uppercase in Angular templates. Now let's move on with the next update that is void in event handling. 
in angular void return types are now supported in template expressions allowing us to ignore return values and this is particularly useful for event listeners where returning false might prevent default behavior so let's consider an example suppose we have a link with a click event handler so here let me add one anchor tag and inside this href i'll just type https colon angular slash dev and here i'll add a click event with function prevent default now let's define the same function inside class file so here i'll define this function with type boolean and it return false okay so in this example this prevent function returns false preventing the default behavior of navigating to the specified url when the link is clicked let me add the link name click me and if i open the browser and here if i click on this link it is preventing me to navigating to the angular.dev url because this function is returning false so with the new word support we can explicitly ignore the return value if needed and to do this we need to add the void keyword before calling the function in the template file so here i'll add void before calling to this prevent default function now when you click the link the browser would navigate to the specified url because the return value of false was ignored okay so this example demonstrates how void can be used to ignore the return value of a function in an event handler allowing default behavior to proceed now let's explore the last update on template called the in operator the in operator checks if a property exists in an object if it exists it prints the required content and if not it doesn't print anything so let's create an example of in operator for an angular template so for that first we will create an object inside class file called user role equals to inside curly brackets i'll add the properties with key value pairs add me with value true comma moderator with value false and last i'll add viewer with value true okay now i'll add a paragraph inside an if condition using the if control flow statement so add the rate if and inside this if block i'll add one paragraph with message user is an admin and inside this if block i'll add the property name admin and then in operator and then object name that is user role okay so inside class file we have created the object with name user roles and inside that there are three properties admin moderator and viewer now inside template file we are checking is admin inside user roles we need to wrap this admin inside quotes. so same i'll write for moderator property so instead of admin i'll write moderator and here also i'll paste the same moderator with article a so in this example the if directive uses the in operator to check if the admin and moderator property exist in the user roles object and if the property exist the corresponding paragraph is displayed and since both properties are present in the user's role object both paragraphs are shown in the browser user is an admin and user is a moderator and if i misspelled the property name then the corresponding paragraph is not displayed in the browser here you can see there is no paragraph related to admin okay so this demonstrates how the in operator conditionally renders content based on property presence in an object and remember the in operator checks if a property exists in an object not its value so even if the value of moderator is false the at the rate if directive will still evaluate to true because the property exists in user roles object 
and if you want to check the value then you would need to use different approach like instead of in operator you need to use object name dot property name like user rules dot moderator so in this case the paragraph would only be displayed if moderator is true and our moderator value is false so this paragraph will not display in the browser here you can see only we can see the admin related paragraph okay so with this we have covered four exciting new features in angular 20 related to template files exponential operator tagged template literals void in event binding and in operator and all these updates will make angular templates even more powerful and flexible so that's all on template updates for now but if i have missed any other key updates please let me know in the comments we can explore them together in a future video so thank you for watching and catch you in the next video where we will dive in into the next angular 20 feature till then keep visiting keep learning and keep commenting thank you bye bye